Treyarch in a statement at the end of February announced that Jason had left Treyarch. The big question is who was going to replace him. And I mean, as far as I'm aware, Lee Ross is still working at Treyarch. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. So about a month ago, I made a video about Jason Blundell leaving Treyarch and how that will affect the next game. In that video, I said that Lee Ross was the obvious choice to replace him. Not even a month later, and he's gone too. Things aren't looking good. Now before I continue, there's a lot more to talk about than just Lee Ross leaving. I've been thinking more and more about this next game, and I've become less and less optimistic. It's also worth noting, at the time I'm recording this, we haven't seen any official trailers, which we'll also be talking about later. Just know that my opinions here can and will change, possibly in the next couple of days. For those who didn't see my original video, let's recap. Call of Duty 2020 is in development hell. Sledgehammer and Raven Software couldn't hash out creative differences, so Activision had to call upon an overworked Treyarch to take over the project. Now they're expected to make an entirely new game by the end of the year during a global pandemic with no end in sight, presumably for two different generations of consoles. Jason, the face of zombies, has left the company, and now Lee Ross, head of Blackout, and the best candidate to replace him, has left not even a month later. These are two massive faces that have been with Activision for over a decade each, leaving the company less than a month apart. In that original video, I didn't talk about why Jason might have left the company because that's his private life. I chalked it up to a coincidence that Jason left the company during a rumored development hell because, ah, he's been there for a decade. Creative minds need a fresh start every once in a while. But two high-level positions leaving the company so soon apart? I'm not that forgiving. Might I remind you, this is the same company that had Bungie popping bottles of champagne after their split from Activision. The same company that pushed an already struggling Treyarch to release a clearly unfinished Black Ops 4 a month early to compete with Red Dead 2. They lost. If only this exact same thing had happened in the past that we could have used to inform our decisions in the present. Lee Ross leaving leads us to another important question for this next game. Where are we going? What is the direction for this new game? The only returning face for zombies is Craig Houston, and as far as I'm aware, he doesn't have influence over the gameplay, just the story. The Aether storyline is finished, so unless they reboot that, they either have to make something completely new, or continue with chaos, which, I mean, I wouldn't mind. But the fact that we have to ask is just another wrinkle in this whole saga. But would people want chaos to return? I loved it personally, aside from these pieces of garbage that can die on fire, but would everyone else? I distinctly remember the majority of the community not caring about chaos during the first two DLCs. It's gotten a warmer reception since then, but has the majority changed their mind? Would a completely new storyline fare any better? Hell, I'm not even sure rebooting Aether would be a good solution either. Apathy for that storyline is at an all-time high. I'd personally like them to finish Chaos, and they can use some remasters to keep people happy in the meantime. Alternatively, if remasters have worn out their welcome, make new Aether maps based on events that were only talked about but we never saw. This machine's been everywhere I have. France, Brazil, even the damn moon. Why is that? Getting back to Lee, it's worth considering that Lee Ross may have not wanted the job in the first place. He got ripped during his time with Infinity Ward, and he wasn't on the Zombies team at all during Black Ops 4, so he may not have wanted the job, and this wouldn't matter at all then. It's also entirely possible that putting new blood in that position will shake up the game mode in just the right way. For right now, it's gonna be one of the great unknowns. But two major faces leaving the company is enough cause for concern, especially before we've even seen gameplay. Which brings me to this. I'm recording this on May 14th, right now it is not even 1.30 in the afternoon, and we haven't seen any gameplay, a trailer, or anything official from Shreyarch, Activision, or the other two developers. We got a teaser trailer for Black Ops 4 in March. Modern Warfare was late and got us a trailer at the end of May, so there's still time. The range of dates the trailer can be released is large, but consider this. People right now don't care about zombies. They just don't. 
is not in the new game and the last game had the worst zombies mode in the series. Apathy is at an all time high and the longer we wait without getting news on the next iteration of the game mode, people are going to grow more and more apathetic. That apathy is going to drop if we get a good looking trailer. There's two key takeaways there. If we get a good looking trailer. If that trailer looks like shit, this is only going to get worse. And now for a worse option. There's no guarantee we're even going to have zombies in this game. Despite Treyarch leading the game now, that wasn't always the case. It's a sledgehammer game. And a raven game. Sledgehammer game. And while Sledgehammer has had zombies in their past two games, that doesn't mean they have to have it now. So we could be talking about this for no reason. And if there's no zombies this year, that apathy is going to sit and build for another year, possibly longer. And that could be devastating. And that horrible thought is where I'm going to leave you. Thanks for watching, click like if you liked, click subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm dead inside. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined.